What's in my Gucci Marmont Diamond Encrusted Edition? Phone, obviously. This also has a card holder in it, so it's my wallet. Glasses case. My analog headphones. Hair tie, a tiny lip balm. Hello, I bought this bag at the end of last year and I forgot to put my rings on. It's too late, it's too late. It's time to do a review of it. There are definitely some expensive issues with this bag that I want to warn you about, but we'll get to that later. Let's start with the positives. So this is the Gucci Marmont, Marmon Velvet Diamante Encrusted Bag. There's two sides to the bag, one side with the GG logo and these giant true diamonds. No, they're not diamonds. They are made of glass though, these giant diamantes, which means that they are quite heavy. And then on the other side, we have the plain GG logo. On the inside, we have a pink lining, actually a beautiful shade of pink, and it's silky too. And there's one little pocket in there, which actually does come in quite handy. Unlike a lot of designer bag pockets, it's actually useful. It actually has some depth to it. It has a zip closure with this leather extension. Aged gold hardware, bit of an antique look. Gives it more of that art deco vibe and a leather strap. Now this also comes in a bum bag slash belt bag, depending on what part of the world you're in variety. That's how I originally encountered this bag. A friend of mine had the bum bag version of it. Now I considered getting the bum bag uh, because I really liked this whole thing. Ultimately, I'm not a, not a bum bag kind of a girl. I'm also quite small and yeah, anytime I put a belt bag on, it just looks, it's, looks like it's way too much on me. So I believe they do not make these anymore. I found this on the pre-loved market. Typically they go for around 1,000 to 1,500 AUDs, Australian dollars. So the pros. Definitely the aesthetics are what drew me in. This bag combines a few of the recurring motifs in my style narrative. We've got the gold, obviously, I'm a, I'm a gold girl. And then we have the diamante. And on top of that, I have a bit of a penchant for velvet. And so it worked quite nicely with this headband. Uh, I do still want a pair of velvet or suede because suede has that velvety look about it, but it's far more resilient than velvet. I would love a pair of suede shoes to complete this little narrative. It's really tricky to combine diamante and gold without it looking like way too much. And I kept those two themes in my wardrobe separated. I just wouldn't wear them together. So I was very, very excited when I found something that combined those themes in a way that actually looked pretty aesthetically pleasing and didn't look like too much. In my opinion anyway, I think this is um, quite toned down considering. So I have some Diamante shoes and some Diamante earrings and it was just really tricky to find a bag that wasn't kind of cheap looking ultimately. So I was very, very excited when I saw this. Now it also has two different sides for that versatility, which I really love. I guess this is a big reason I got it because if I'm feeling like this is too much, I can wear it this way. Very subtle when you wear it this way, it's very simple. Now it's also very lightweight being made of velvet. So the actual body of the handbag is very light, a lot lighter than a leather handbag, which means that it's great for travel. And I guess that's kind of what ultimately uh, sealed my decision to get this bag. It was the combination between the versatility, the two sides, and the lightweightness of her that that made me commit because I thought, wow, this this is such a great travel bag. This is such a great bag to take on a Greek island with you. It's not going to cause a lot of trouble in my very light luggage. I have two options for wearing it when, I, when I'm there. Another great pro about this bag is it's not a style that's in demand. Some people would see that as a negative. Uh, for me, it was a positive because there is another designer handbag that I am 
wanting to commit to this year so I didn't really want to spend a crazy amount on another handbag. So I got this for I think between 1300 and 1400 Australian dollars which is pretty standard for this handbag depending on the condition that it's in. Now it might be a con for you if you want to resell it at some point and you want that resale value to be quite high you won't get that with this bag but in saying that if I did decide I don't want this in a year's time I could probably easily get a thousand dollars for it if I um, maintain the condition that it's in right now. Let's be real, I don't know if that's possible. I'm pretty uncoordinated generally speaking. It's pretty likely I'll damage it, knock on velvet that I don't. Okay, before we get into the cons, this girl needs a drink. this recipe online for some tasty ice cubes. I made these for my birthday party to have with champagne, but today I am enjoying them with kombucha. Okay, the cons. So while velvet is a gorgeous, lush material, if you do have a pet, you are going to need to defer regularly. Now on top of that, the velvet is a lot easier to damage than leather. From what I've seen uh, with the other bags that I investigated of this type, part of the reason some of them weren't in the greatest condition anymore was because the velvet had worn away on this edge piping. I mean, not totally worn away, but you know, like you could tell that it had lost some of its, um, definitely lost some of its sheen. Now, another thing that brought down the condition of some of the bags that I looked at were chips in the diamante pieces. So even with my bag, there is a small chip in one of the diamonds. I'm sure you'll see it in the footage. Oh yeah, I can see it. So yeah, there is a little bit of damage on this bag already. Everything in life is just a compromise, isn't it? I mean, if you're gonna get the luster of a real glass diamante, something that looks gorgeous, that is genuinely refractive, kind of like a real diamond, it's gonna look great. But on the other hand, it's more susceptible to chips. If it was just plastic, it wouldn't chip, but it would also look cheap. So that's something to be aware of if you are looking at getting one of these on the pre-loved market. Expect that it's already going to have chips in the Diamante. Look for it in the images in case the person who's selling it hasn't declared it. Now if you are enjoying this video and you would like to see more from me, did you know that I have a lovely Patreon community? I have been posting brand new videos there every week for years, since 2017 in fact. And if you join right now, you get instant access to well over 300 ad-free videos. And if you don't like it, you are allowed to leave at any time. There is no contract binding you to stay in the community. Though if you do choose to stay, you will probably get to know me a lot more. And of course, you will be helping me support this here body of work. Patreon is an extremely important part of how I am able to support myself as an independent creator slash artist. A massive thank you to my beautiful Patreon community. I could not do this without you. And I'll see you on Friday. So I mentioned earlier that she's lightweight and this is true, which is great. But on the other hand, it does mean that there are some balance issues with the handbag. She's lightweight. The strap is thin. It's, you know, there's a lot going on with the strap. So it does sort of it doesn't stay very still as you're moving around and it can tip over it can go upside down depending on what's going on i wouldn't be doing yoga while uh, wearing this handbag it's not safe 
it ain't safe, it ain't safe, it ain't safe. Okay, now here is, here is the crux of <laughs> what I want to warn you about with this bag. And unfortunately, this is a bit of a recurring theme with designer handbags in general, and that is the strap. There's two aspects of the strap that are a problem for me with this bag. The first is the recurring problem, which is the strap is too long. It is just too long. I find that a lot of designer handbags are made for models, I guess. Not the little five, four girls like me. When I wear this bag, it sits well below my hip. It sort of sits on my thigh. It's just too low. It's way, way, way too low. And if you'll recall, if you've watched my other bag reviews, if not, I should probably take that YSL bag review from my other channel and stick it on this channel. I probably will do that sometime in the future. Even with that bag where the strap is adjustable, still too long at the shortest length. Unfortunately on this bag, the strap be not adjustable, which is an expensive problem. It's expensive if you want to remedy that, which I do because I intend to use this regularly and I am using it regularly, but I just know that I would enjoy it more if it was the correct length for my little body. Now, obviously, if you're gonna spend more than a thousand dollars on something, you probably don't wanna be spending extra money on it, especially when that particular action will take away from the value of the handbag because, well, if I've had the strap altered, it's no longer a factory setting strap length. I guess I have to make note of that in my listing if I choose to sell it again. I might not be able to sell it because of that. On top of that, obviously, if it's not Gucci who's altering the strap for me, it's, it's my responsibility if, well, it's my problem if the repair doesn't go well. So I have to be very, very careful with who I see about this. I need to find a leather worker who's very reputable, who I can trust. Because let me tell you, even right now, I'm giving you the tea. Even right now, as I sit here, I know of a local leather smith shoe repair slash watch repair shop that I've now been disappointed with twice. There's no way in hell I'm taking this bag over there. So you really have to do your research, but basically not adjustable at all. You can't remove the strap. Very annoying on this particular model because actually without the strap, it looks pretty cute. So if there was just like a simple way to do it, that would be great. Maybe there is and I'm just stupid. If I could just take the strap off easily, I would just not bother having it altered, it's just the times when the strap's annoying me, I would just carry it as a little purse. So I did take it to one leather person. The problem was that they could not find or did not have a finding that looked a lot like this. Now, when they take that off, they're probably gonna destroy it. So that's why you need to go to someone who's actually got something that looks a lot like that. Is that what's called? Red eyelet? No, it's not an eyelet, it's a rivet. So the last leather person who looked at this, they said, no, we don't have that type of finding. All we can do is, you know, like take out some of the links in the chain. The chain links are not soldered, which does mean that theoretically, if you have the right tools, you should be able to open the links up and, you know, put them back together. And they want to charge me $50 for that. I don't know if you know this about me, but I used to make jewelry a long time ago. I used to make jewelry and I do have some of the jewelry making tools still. So I said, you are going to charge me $50 to open up the links and take some links out and then put the links back together? They said yes, and I said, well, I can do that myself. And I walked out of there. I wasn't quite that sassy. They actually did some other work for me. Um, but the bottom line is, yeah, I still haven't found someone who can do this job for me. The other option is just taking the chain bit out, full stop. Then it's actually the right size on both sides if I took both the chains out. But I do think it then loses some of the drama, you know, the, the, the drama of the bag. And then it doesn't really look like the original so much anymore. So I think really the best option is having the strap shortened and I'm just, yeah, I'm just trying to find the right person for the job really. So yeah, I, I would be very wary of strap issues with designer bags because unless you are a six foot <laughs> or you've just got a really long upper body, there's a really big chance you're gonna to struggle to find a strap that works for you. So in saying that, I do love this bag and I mean, I have no regrets. I've been using it so much already and I got it, as I said, for future travel adventures. So inevitably, 
I don't know if I'm gonna end up on a Greek island this year, but if I do, this little gal is coming with me. Well, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, let me know what you think about my little Gucci. I'll chat with you in the comments.